Today's lecture would continue our series on the cranial nerves with cranial nerve number 10, the vagus nerve. Now the vagus nerve begins in the medulla oblongata and continues its course laterally through the jugular foramen where it branches out from there. Now it has a multitude of different types of fibers including general sensory, visceral sensory, special sensory, branchiomotor, and parasympathetic fibers. It has a multitude of functions that we'll go over as well as a lot of different lesions such as dysphonia, dysphagia, loss of gag reflex, and systemic results. We will return to the differences in the pathway of the right versus left vagus nerve after we've come back from our next diagram. Looking at this diagram, we can see that we've got a bit of complexity again, but we'll get through it. So, before the vagus nerve exits through the jugular foramen, it gives off an auricular sensory branch which innervates the skin of the external acoustic meatus. Traveling down through the jugular foramen, the vagus nerve continues through a pair of ganglion, termed the superior and inferior ganglion, and continues on to branch, providing sensory to the carotid sinus, as well as sensory in dark blue, parasympathetic in the dotted blue line, and motor in the orange and black spotted lines. Continue down through the thorax and through the abdomen to another series of branching. It is also to note that the vagus nerve is the longest of the cranial nerves, starting from the head and continuing all the way down into the abdomen as far as the colon in the splenic flexure area. So we can see here that both parasympathetic and sensory fibers reach to the lungs, they reach to the intestines, the liver, the spleen, the pancreas, the kidney. There's a longer list that I couldn't fit on here including the uh, esophagus, including the colon, as well as we have branches here all the way to the heart, the cardiac branches. Now, included here, we also have motor in orange, motor branches which continue on to the uh, pharyngeal constrictor muscles as well as the larynx muscles and this branch called the recurrent laryngeal branch has two separate pathways whether it's on the right or the left based on the vascular anatomy of the thorax, which we will return to in the previous diagram. Another layer here, I'm sorry, another branch here, the superior laryngeal nerve breaks off into the inferior laryngeal and the external laryngeal branches. The inferior laryngeal um, allows for sensory innervation to the laryngeal area and the external laryngeal provides motor function to the cricothyroid and middle pharyngeal constrictor muscles. Up here we have the pharyngeal branch of the vagus nerve, which splits off into the motor fibers of the superior pharyngeal constrictor muscles and continues on to the sensory innervation of the soft palate. Now, continuing and summarizing what is on this part of the diagram, we have the breakdown of the different fibers here. In general sensory, we have the skin of the external acoustic meatus with the auricular branch. We have the larynx mucosal sensory with the soft palate and the laryngeal. We have the taste to the epiglottis. Now this is the special sensory fibers of the vagus nerve, taste to the epiglottis. In the branchiomotor section, we have 
the muscles of the pharynx, the vagus nerve innervates all of the muscles of the pharynx, except if you'll remember the stylopharyngeus muscle, which is innervated by cranial nerve number nine. The muscles of the larynx, the soft palate, and the upper two-thirds of the esophagus. It also provides parasympathetic fibers to the preganglionic fibers to the thorax and abdominal smooth muscle, viscera, and glands. And it also provides visceral sensory to the heart, the thorax, thoracic organs, as well as the abdominal organs. Now returning to this diagram, I'd like to address the different pathways of the two vagus nerves because of the vascular anatomy of the thorax. Now the right vagus travels anterior to the subclavian artery and then continues posterior to the sternocleidomastoid joint. Also, the right recurrent laryngeal branch hooks underneath the right subclavius and then innervates on its side the majority of the muscles of the larynx. Now at the left vagus, it travels between the left common carotid and left subclavian arteries. It then travels posterior to the sternocleidomastoid joint, and then the left recurrent laryngeal branch hooks underneath the aorta, and then functions to innervate the muscles of the larynx. Now, looking at a result of the lesions, since there is such a variety of actions that the cranial nerve number 10 can perform, it has a variety of pathologies and we'll go over some of the main ones. Now, dysphonia, dysphagia, loss of a gag reflex, that has to do with the fact that the vagus nerve innervates so many of the muscles of the pharynx, the larynx, soft palate, so that is the result of these. If you will recall, Cranial nerve number 9 served as the afferent aspect of the gag reflex. Here we have the efferent or the motor aspect of the gag reflex. So this will also participate in a loss of the reflex if there is a lesion. Also, a patient that has certain lesions of the vagus nerve will tend to show on a tongue depressor test a uvula which deviates away from the side of the lesion. Now here I've written systemic, and by this I mean um, in reference to a lesion that would result in loss of parasympathetic fibers to some of the visceral organs. If you'll recall, this nerve, nerve number 10, innervates parasympathetic fibers to the cardiac muscles, the GI muscles, the lungs. So uh, this would tend to decrease or maintain a lower heart rate or parasympathetic fibers also function to increase digestion and move contents throughout our GI tract. So if there is a lesion of these parasympathetic fibers, then our heart would experience tachycardia or an increased heart rate and our GI tract would tend to have the sympathetic fibers take over where we have a decrease in digestion and constipation. Uh, a long time ago, they used to perform vagotomies so that the stomach would stop to secrete as much acid as it would. But due to pharmacological advances, this is no longer a common practice. And this is cranial nerve number 10.